Greetings everybody, GameFrog here, and this video will show you how to hook up a Super Nintendo, or SNES, using an RF switch box. Alright, to do this we're going to need a Super Nintendo, a power supply, the SNS002 or replacement, and we're also going to need an RF unit, or switch box. Alright, before we get started, let's take a look at the input jacks on the back of the Super Nintendo. First thing we're going to see is the AC adapter port. This is where we're going to plug our power supply. We also have a channel 3 and 4 switch, which we will be using. We will be using the RF out port, and we won't be using the multi out port when using the RF box. Now let's talk one second about power supplies. Most of the third-party power supplies you get today come with two jacks on them, a smaller one and a larger one. The smaller one is used for the regular Nintendo or the NES, and the larger one is used for the Super Nintendo. A lot of these power supplies come this way. You just take the large power supply and plug it into the AC adapter in port. You can leave the other one hanging. All right, we can also test the Super Nintendo at this point by just plugging it in. No need to hook it up to a TV yet. And let's throw the power switch. We get a little LED light on. We know we're in good shape. Now let's take a look at the RF unit, or the RF switch box. There are two connections on the RF switch box. The first one is an RCA jack. This goes to the Super Nintendo. And the other one is a coaxial. This will go to the TV. All we need to do is grab the Super Nintendo and we plug the RCA part of the RF box into the RF out port. Should slide right in, no problem. Now, we have a channel select switch here. It doesn't really matter which one you use, whichever channel you select is the channel on the TV that the game will display on. Alright, now let's move to the back of the TV. So what you're looking for is the antenna in ports. This particular TV has two. Most TVs will have one, but if yours has two, that's fine. You can use either one. We're going to grab the RF box and take the cable and slide it right onto that port. Piece of cake. If your TV does have two, They'll normally be listed as TVA, TVB, or something like that, and you will have to switch to the proper one when looking for the game. Now, if you have one port and it was being used for cable or satellite TV, you can actually unplug that cable and attach it right here to the bottom of the RF box, and that just screws on just like it's screwed onto the back of the TV. And this will allow you to continue watching TV when your system is off, and when you turn the system on, the game box will automatically switch to game. You're ready to go. Now that we have the cables attached, we're almost ready. Next thing we need to do is plug in a game. Let's go with the classic, Zelda. All right, let's grab the remote for the TV. And what we're gonna be looking for is the input button. Now it could say input or it could say source. Either one of these buttons will cycle through the input options that you noticed on the back of your TV. Flip the TV on. The signal from the RF box will display on the air channel, which is your over the air signal. So what you need to do is cycle through the inputs on your TV until you get to the air station. If you see static, you'll know you're on the right one. Once we see that, all we need to do is turn to the channel that we selected on the channel select switch on the back of the Super Nintendo. Many TVs have an auto channel scanner. This will look for all stations that your TV can see. If this has been used, certain channels that don't have a signal will be blocked and you can't turn to them. So you may have to go to the menu and manually select that channel. Once you get the right channel, there's your game. Now go save the princess. Troubleshooting the Super Nintendo. One neat thing about the Super Nintendo, turning the power button on locks the cartridge. If you can't depress the cartridge flap, 
to insert a cartridge, it most likely means that the power supply is pushed up. You simply need to push it down and you're good to go. A lot of times with these old cartridges, if the game doesn't look right, the cartridge itself just probably needs to be clean. All you need to do is grab you some rubbing alcohol, grab a Q-tip and dip it in, and then there's a blade on the bottom of the cartridge. Just scrub both sides of the blade back and forth with the Q-tip to get rid of all the dirt. Now try it again. That should have you up and running. If you have any questions, you can reach me at GameTrog.com.